Hey, what's up? We should be live. <laughs> Welcome. Let me know you can hear me well. I'm going to test it out on my end here on YouTube. Uh, hopefully, there's not a huge delay because lately I'm hitting the start live and then I have to wait for <laughs> two hours for the video to catch up. But hey, Kiss, thank you so, so much for being here. Hopefully, I'm not silent. Looks like my uh, my microphone seems to be working. Hopefully, it's the correct one. Uh, thank you so much. Hey, Richard. Hope you're doing well. Again, hope you're feeling better. It sounds like it. Uh, Joanna, hey, how are you doing? Brilliant. Just had a notification for this. Can't wait. Yes, it's going to be fun. I have a good tutorial here for you. Something that really shows that freedom. Talking about. There we go. We have audio. We're good. Let's see the connection here. We're good. Let's let us cross fingers. The connection is going to be good. I don't need these headphones. I'm going to stay without them. Now, if the audio cuts out, something happens, you immediately let me know. We have the backup. But in any case, thank you so much. Let me know what's going on. How have you been? Um, what I want to do is, so I'm going to tell you the plan for today. We're going to jump into the process. I'm actually going to share my uh, screen with you already, just to, show, to give you kind of a preview. But we're going to let some more people in. Uh, so we have this very nice painting process. Um, something special. This is a scene I've been waiting for a long time to paint. I really wanted to paint this thing. Um, I took this photo um, one morning walk I did with Ruth, and it it is such a pretty scene, and the way the the grass glows and the sun and everything, um, it just really, really was something I was looking forward to, and. More than that, why can't I go back? There we go. <laughs> uh, even more than that, I would say, what's a better setup? I'm not even sure. Maybe this? I don't know. Well, we'll yeah, this is more effective. We'll leave it either this or that. Uh, but in case, yeah, so this is a scene I was really looking forward to painting. Um, all of the details on the, the branches of the tree is something that really attracted me to it. Um, and just showing this, and I can show you the, the painting here, um, this use of opaque paint, wet and wet, which is so much fun. Uh, so let me know uh, wh where you are at and how you're doing. Hey, Daisy. Yeah, I caught you live. Yes, thank you for being here. Uh, very happy we started. Uh, same, this is going to be the new time for now, 8 a.m. Eastern, just because it's more convenient, the light is going to be more consistent, and I'll be able to soon do uh, painting streams live. Like, I'll just show you a pre-recorded process, if that makes sense. We have Ruth here. Maybe she'll come join us at some point. I've got my coffee and my water. <laughs> got to be prepared. Um, and yeah, so my plan is first this process. Then I want to share with you a couple of maybe reference photos that I've been also looking forward to painting. Um, I think it's interesting because the, the way my taste works and the things I, I seek and search for to paint have changed. Um, I find that a lot of cityscape scenes that in the past I would be really eager to paint uh, no longer have that same effect on me. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, um, but yeah. Uh, it's just uh, a change of taste and the thing I want to express. Um, I need to have something else kind of extra in the scene to make me really interested in it, uh, not just buildings and the sunlight. The pattern has to be interesting. There has to be physical interesting details there. So I'd have something like interesting pottery or stuff like that. Uh, something similar to what I've shared with you in the story, I think, the last story that I posted. One of the last stories that I posted on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, in any case, we'll get to it. Um, hey, Carmen, thank you for being here. Uh, so I think we can get started. We have about 43 people. Nice. Thank you for being here. Um, we'll get started with the process. And we, kinda, we can kind of pause it and talk about what I'm doing. Um, actually, why did I jump forward? Well, let's start from the beginning. Uh, so the drawing is going to be really simple. And again, I can kind of hold up the finished piece just to give you a hint. Uh, but you can see the reference photo there. Hey, Brenda, how are you doing? Uh, hi, everyone. Really uh, enjoyed your last live. It was a long one. Yes, sending best wishes from Australia. Thank you. I don't know how to pronounce this username. Let's say C U N T O, hair with the E in the end. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, so, look at the, the interesting bit here is the base of the tree. So, if I'm going to pause the video, 
Um, you'll see that I'm just using a rounded shape. Uh, this encapsulates just everything. You see this entire base uh, of the tree. I can just use a circle to show where it is. Th how open or closed that circle is will convey the height, with how we're looking at it. By the way, I ended up even flattening it. I thought I was exaggerating the angle, but I ended up kind of flattering it. Hey, Rosemary, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Um, so you see very, very, very basic uh, sketch. Nothing to it, really. Um, again, I am using my experience with um, both composition, but also um, perspective. So I can tell kind of how things work. You see this line, it's not, it's not parallel to the top. Um, and let me actually show you if I flip this. So you see here, uh, these lines are running at a bit of an angle. If this is the top, the lines run like that. What this does is it just shows that where the street is moving. Now, the tree itself, the trunk, it's not too um, perfectly vertical lines that are parallel to one another. They taper. These are very important things to convey the angle and the interest in how we're doing. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Uh, I, I never know if like if a username is intentional or it's not. Like If you read my, if I would just have my username, um, you know, just Yankonski or Liron Yankonski, no one would be able to read it. What is that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no worries whatsoever. And thank you so much for being here. Um, so yeah, opening up the palette. And the way I like to paint these things, is I like to just jump to it, into it um, and kind of see what happens on paper. Um, because I know I can, there was, there was, if you look at the components of the scene, which makes me really like, let's just let it run in the background, which makes me really, really like, um, like the scene, the components are more fragmented light and shadow details. Um, but you don't have really people here. You don't have animals. You don't have complex perspective. It's still quite simple. So the best way I can do this is just throw some stuff on the paper and, and see how it works, what areas I want to connect, what areas I want to uh, let flow together, uh, what edges I want to keep smooth, make smooth, keep hard edges, and so on. That's just how I do it personally. By the way, today's stream, I don't know how much will go after the painting process, so we'll see. Uh, I do want to show you a couple of reference photos I'm looking forward to painting. Um, so yeah, sprayed a bit of water. Uh, on the on the entire thing, because again of the nature of the scene, I don't mind it all flowing out and kind of uh, being very uh, loose in how it moves. Um, now the colors I'm using, yes, I'm asked about these very often. So I'm using um, this in particular. Is there's a bunch of reds. Honestly, it doesn't matter as much. But the yellow I'm using is mostly yellow ochre for now. Uh, it's a good one just for pushing things to be warm in the darks. Um, but if I'm looking for uh, more brightness, like you see in the grass on the lower sections, that's when I'll use something like lemon yellow or um, I forgot the name of this yellow. It's a different yellow uh, by M. Graham, but it's very similar in the way it behaves to lemon yellow, actually. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, now as we move right along the tree, um, you start turning into this beautiful golden area. Now, this golden area, um, I'm exaggerating a bit, it a bit with the warmth, but what will end up happening is it won't be enough. That's how it sometimes happens. It looks too strong. It ends up being not strong enough. So it's the complete opposite of the scale. Uh, and you can already tell like there's a lot of nuance in the colors of the tree trunk, whether it's um, uh, blues, yellows, reds, violets, purples, a lot of purples here, actually. Now, I do want to apologize in advance and warn you. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. Uh, the, there is a big section that I don't know why the camera didn't record. Uh, so there is a lot of wet and wet using opaque paint, which is the subject of the title of this process. To me, that's the most interesting thing about it that was cut out. However, you will see a lot of it. So don't worry about that. Uh, there will be more. Should I let people on Instagram know we're live? Let me let me make sure. Um, uh, let's see here. 
Yeah, no, I think people should see it. I'm not sure, though. I'll take a photo of the screen and show. Come on. I don't know why I just want to. Uh, there we go. I'm going to write down. Sorry for doing this now. Live. There we go. Um, so, yeah. So there's already a lot of nuance in the colors, which is very interesting. And here comes the, the grass, the, all the lower sections. Um, so the way I paint the, the grass, this is tricky. This is where uh, it's very easy to just not produce the right amount of vibrancy. The color needs to be really vibrant, especially for the lighter sections. Um, so the way I'm doing this is by using mostly that lemon yellow you see down below. And the beauty about it, already you can see use of opaque paint, wet and wet, because this lemon yellow, and you know what, it's not even a lemon yellow. Let me confirm what it is, because I did use it just the other day. It's, I'm pretty sure it's M. Graham, and you should be able to hear me really well, because I'm with my um, lab mic. Um, oh, I think it's bismuth, bismuth yellow. Uh, let me see if I can find it. There we go. There we go. I have a bag here with my uh, tubes that I use more frequently. Actually, I have a more frequent one. This is the second spot. Uh, let me switch over the view. Uh, Daiji, what brush are you using? That looks like an ink brush. Yes, it's a Michael Soloviev brush. Um, um, where is it? <laughs> there we go. This one comes in the Michael Soloviev set. He sent it to me with a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, if you look for Michael Soloviev brushes, you will find this exact one. Um, I find that it has an interesting way of handling um, when I do wet and wet. It's actually really um, good for gentle control. I don't know why. I know it's the type. But the yellow I'm using is bismuth yellow, which is this by M. Graham sent to me by a viewer, thank you so, so much, a while back. Um, this is super useful. So this is pigment yellow 184. 184. Actually, let's see if Daniel Smith has something similar. Daniel Smith watercolor PY 184. Um, so that's going to be, yeah, it's called Vis Bismuth Vanadate or vanadate yellow, that's interesting. So yeah, it's a bit different to lemon yellow, but quite similar, because I did, I did also have lemon yellow in my essential set that I used a lot. It shows really well uh, over existing paint. So if we just rewind for a second here, uh, you'll see me dipping into it. It's a very bright yellow. You can see it right here. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna go more full screen. And uh, yeah, Daiji, if you're looking specifically for stronger, control in the nuances of wet and wet, this brush is really good, including also the lemons and brushes have the same concept to them. I don't know what it is about these because of the bamboo handle too. It's quite comfortable. Um, so if you see here, hey, Stephanie, good morning from Illinois. Happy to catch uh, at least a little of the live stream and I'll finish later. Yeah, cool. Um, we'll see. By the way, let me know. So. People who are here, here obviously will say 8 a.m. is better, I think. Let me know if you prefer 9 a.m. Eastern. Because uh, the last time people said it's a good time. But in any case, look at the yellow here. Look at how it blends into the existing paint and it pushes it outwards. Um, it's very strong, very opaque, and it, it has this very powerful movement. Um, different pigments are going to move differently. Uh, hey, Carney or Charney, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Thank you for being here because it's the with the little symbol above it. Thank you so, so much. Um, so yeah, it has this different pigments move differently, wet and wet. And this one just moves everything out of the way. Very fun to use. Uh, very similar to an old Apple painting process I did before that maybe I'll, I'll, kind of, I'll try and remind you. Uh, maybe later I'll show you. Um, the pigment really pushes uh, pushes everything out, which is really fun. Um, one more thing I want to direct your attention to is look at this sharp corner or turn in the transition from light to dark. This is, I tried capturing this kind of a pattern. You see here? Um, so yeah. Now, one of my, I actually did another version of this. Um, 
that I didn't like as much. And one of the things I noticed immediately was I did not go dark enough. As much as I thought the tree trunk was dark enough, it wasn't. So you'll see me fixing that uh, mistake now. I'm going to make sure to go very, very dark if I can. Um, just to really push the entire left side to look dark. Uh, it's a kind of neutral gray. There's a, a bit of a blue nuance in it, more gray, a bit of a warm nuance in it. What the point is, it's going to look super dark now, but once it dries, it's going to look um, fairly light. You'll be amazed. Uh, hey, Polly's Arts, thank you for being here. That's a cool profile pic. Where's that from? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Um, let me see something here. Good. Uh, so yeah. So now this is fun. As we move down towards the shadows on the base, you'll notice a lot of again warmth within the shadows. And by the way, I'll put a, there is a link in the description box if you want to see the reference photo up close. Um, so what you'll see is I'm adding here to this area a lot of warmth, but strong warmth. It has to be strong because even the shadows themselves are a little orangey. Now, I'm exaggerating, as always, uh, but it was important to start pushing them in that direction. It's very visible here up top on the tree trunk. Um, actually, I can show you even on the painting itself. Uh, this section is going to be very visible. You'll see it later on. Uh, but yeah. uh, hey, KKD Aquarelle, greetings from Germany. Thank you so much. Um, I, I don't remember your username. Are you new or have you changed it? Uh, let me know. And thank you so much. Uh, yes, aquarelle watercolor is what we're doing here. Uh, Polly's art. Oh, yeah, thanks. It's a cover I did for my brother's fantasy novel. Oh, that's awesome. Can you uh, let me know the name of the novel? I want to see it full size. I, I actually looked at this and I'm like, is this artwork from uh, Magic the Gathering? I, I was sure it's from somewhere like that. So it's really cool looking. Uh, hey, Scott, how are you doing? Good afternoon from Scotland. Thank you for being here. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, so now we're starting starting to push the shadows on the base. Now, again, none of this is, this isn't the final look. Um, I'm building it up because there's going to be more and more layers, um, especially because what we currently have here, you know, it looks cool and everything, this section. It looks like you have the, the mid values and the darks. What's very easy to miss, the mid values are going to dry lighter than this. So what we have in essence is not dark enough paint. We're going to have to push it to be a little darker. I know it looks quite dark. That's that's the misleading nature of, uh, of a wet medium. You have to really push it and push it and push it, not just in the darks, not just in the strong shadows, but in the mid values as well. Uh, and that's pretty much the process you'll see me going through of uh, editing those uh, roots which are, again, to me, one of the main attractions of this scene, I will probably make a larger version of that, uh, of this painting. This is why it's so exciting. I wrote it in the description box. Um, it's it's a scene I really think I can make something special of if I paint it really big and get all of these details in the branches. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. This is a beautiful study piece, though it's not a practice piece. Um, KKD says, I am you. Cool. Welcome aboard. Yeah, I had a feeling. Uh, Polly's Art. Sure, it's called The Planet of the Gods by A.M. John Johnston. Sorry I'm putting you on the spot. But it's really, uh, it's a really nice artwork. That's nice. Also has, has a high uh, Goodreads ranking. This is really cool. Really cool artwork. I'll show it later, maybe full screen. Um, so yeah, moving on. Now, I want to show you something interesting. Sometimes the most effective way to, thank you, Ruth, uh, to create a mixed texture. So for example, if you look at the reference photo, you'll see patches of dark, dark kind of ground and shadow and bright grass. So you'll see both. So a really direct way to do this, and, and I always say like the, the most direct path of least resistance, just the best way to go very often. People overcomplicate things. So the, the easiest path is to just stick a bunch of that dark brown and the green next to it. So I'm just spreading these out simultaneously. I'm putting in all the brown and then I'm putting in all the yellow between it. Uh, what? Baena? What? What? So I'm putting it in between. 
And that's a very fast way to get both in there, make the mix organically, have it look really good. You can always spray more water, introduce more water, splash more water into it, and it will look really, really nice. Now, there is um, a bit of a shadow there to the left of the tree uh, that I'm placing in before I even put the grass here. So you'll see, I don't even have the, the green light grass here in this spot. I'm just putting in the shadow, that shadow. Um, and sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll find it fun to put the shadow before I even have the lights around it. I don't know, leads to sometimes richer, um, a richer final color that looks really, really good. Um, hey, Vespa, how are you doing? Iron from California, love your dark contrasts at the base of the tree. Yes, that's gonna be probably the, again, the most fun spot here. And, and I'm pretty sure the next painting after what I'm doing here, which I will show you later on, uh, will be this one, the larger version. Uh, police art, no, I'm glad uh, to share on Flyer. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's a really good uh, piece of art. I like it a lot. Uh, Rhonda, greetings from Las Vegas. Are you self-taught or have taken art lessons? Uh, I am self-taught. I, you could say I took, um, I took lessons, but it's more like I learned from uh, YouTube videos. Uh, I don't have any formal education really in art. Um, I pretty much discovered everything on my own. I did take a few courses, you know, like Proko's um, anatomy course, stuff like that, but nothing beyond. Um, now what you're seeing here is also interesting. The section to the right there, um, there's a lot of different yellows there. So you, you see me basically dipping into the yellow ochre. Okay? In case you miss, just because people do wonder sometimes what, what the exact color I use are. Uh, if you look at this section in the video, sorry, uh, you'll see right here is my yellow ochre. And I have another one here that I really like. Maybe I dip into that. I don't even remember. Yeah, yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is just a very nice, uh, this one is Mission Gold. It's just a very nice color to warm things up. It, it feels fairly neutral to warm, which I like warm yellows, personally. I'm biased. Some people will like cooler uh, yellows. And it makes this green yellow, the bismuth, kind of merge together with it, making it more natural looking. Um, and because I'm using relatively few colors, the harmony is still preserved. Everything here is yellow ochre, uh, bismuth yellow, and that's pretty much it, right? Um, it makes things work together nicely. Um, Nina Art, hey, so glad I made it to your stream again. And the topic is just what I need now. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun. We're gonna jump uh, into the wet and wet opaque paint soon. And it's just, it's it's a fun bit, you'll see. Thank you so much, Rhonda, much, much appreciated. Uh, and David, hello, quite new to this channel, already love it. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, quite a lot of new people, I really appreciate it. It seems like people discover the channel during live streams, which is fun. Um, oops, hopefully I didn't mess things up. I think I just hit something on the mic. Let's see, let me, let's make sure. Yeah, I think I'm still audible. Let me pause this to make sure. Uh, this I'm still getting used to this mic. I mean, it's really comfortable and convenient, but I wanna make sure. Cause there's some, yeah, good. There is some advanced functionality I haven't yet tested. So until I really know it thoroughly, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, hey, my name, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Uh, Danny Watercolors, hey, Leron, so much fun to catch you live. Love the painting process. I'm always curious, where are you from? I'm from Israel. <laughs> A lot of people don't know. And and uh, I have old uh, videos from um, from Paris. A lot of people think I'm from Paris, uh, which is funny. Um, yes. It's okay, yeah, good, good. Thank you for letting me know, thank you. Uh, and Danny, I don't remember seeing you also around the live stream. So thank you so much. If it's the first, if it's not, maybe I forget my apologies. Um, and my name, hope you're doing super well. Uh, please art. Uh, I always mean to check out the streams, but I'm usually busy. Early works, works for me. Okay, cool, cool. Good to know. Uh, January, I thought opaque watercolors are just gouache paints. Basically, it's the same. So as far as I know, it's, 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 so gouache will have maybe a bit of a different composition, uh, but practically speaking, it's the same. Uh, it's not the same as acrylics, for example, because acrylics is just based, it has a completely different composition as far as I know, even though it could be uh, watered down, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it's it's very similar. 
uh, and it works well. So you could say I'm, I'm painting watercolors um, uh, enriched by gouaches as opposed to maybe doing gouaches and watercolor together or gouache that is enriched with watercolor or very diluted gouache. Uh, and I do know I need to try out more gouache painting. The thing is, um, my my specific like my taste just calls for watercolor even when i look at gouache paintings i don't like them as much as i like the final look of watercolor so i think i'll always be rooted mostly in watercolor um and and then i will use again gouache to kind of uh, enrich it now i want to pause for a second because you have to see like look at how Again, all of these very non-smooth transitions, I love, that's again, that's exactly why I love watercolor. And when you look at it now, it's a mess. And I'm gonna show you. So you see there's a bit here that leaks. There's some drops of water that I kind of sprayed on. This leaks here. Um, at this point, a lot of people will worry about these things, but what you have to understand, it's very malleable still, either by adding water and making it move, or by using opaque paint, whether while it's wet or while it's dry, which is what we're gonna jump into. You're gonna see it in a second. Uh, but let's look at more of the uh, chats. Uh, Danny says, yes, it's my first time watching live, but I love your channel. Thank you. Yeah, I, I suppose because compared to the number of subscribers, the number of live viewers is always significantly smaller. Um, there's a lot of people who watch the videos, maybe even every video and, and never make it to a live stream. So uh, it's easy to be surprised. Thank you so much. Uh, Polly's arts gouache is tough and tedious, but it's a fun challenge. Yeah, I could I could see myself trying it just to figure out what the difference is with watercolor. Uh, but yeah, um, mostly I think I'm gonna the main thing is it's gonna stay watercolor. Now I'm painting around this arrow. There are, there's this marking on the ground, um, and and what's really nice about it, it's a color that's a little hard to read. Now it's more of a gray than a purple violet that I used here. And that's good for me to know for the larger, more detailed process. Um, and I think also maybe it could be, uh, I could use Prussian blue to get that same gray a little better. But what's cool is that purple is gonna contrast nicely with the yellow on the arrows. So you'll see. Um, and now I like to, if I find darks in the peripheries of the painting, I like to just throw them in. Um, I find that it looks really good. Um, and I don't really mind, you know, first darks, then lights, vice versa. I, I just go for it, whatever feels right at the moment. Um, my result ends up looking very organic, though I am um, trading that off for more accuracy, possibly. And that is fine. That's a trade-off I'm willing to make. Uh, KKD, uh, normally I'm working at this time, so today is an exception that I can catch the live stream. Okay, cool. But 9 a.m. Eastern would have worked better um because it's probably the same you'll probably be working then too um so yeah putting in a bit of warmth for the ground but the fun part there is going to be putting the green for the grass that i'm not even sure if i'm putting now now you could maybe could relate to this these areas are not really the focal point so there is something very freeing to just placing them in without worrying too much uh, the tree is going to be the main thing. That's where most of the attention will go anyway. So it's kind of okay. You can almost phone it in a bit, I guess. Now look at the tree trunk and how light it is compared to the background. That's what I was saying. It's going to dry much, much lighter. Now, something interesting is happening right now. I don't know if you experienced this. Sometimes you spend some time on a painting and then uh, 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 switch just flips. And you're like, okay, I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to go crazy a little. Even though I went crazy in the bottom, here I really, I don't know, something changed. I can feel it even now watching myself paint. It just switches on and then I'm I'm in the mindset of more, let's put the final thing down. Like I know whatever I'm going to put now, it's going to be the, the final thing. I may layer on top of it, as you'll soon see, but it's going to, my goal is to push it to be final. Sometimes that happens to me and I just go crazy. You can tell by the crazy direction I'm moving my brush and the pattern, the flip, the switch has flipped. Uh, Stephanie, I love using white gouache as an accent in paintings or white gouache mixed with other regular watercolor colors. Same here. That's exactly what I do. I use a Winsor Newton designer's wash mostly because I really like it. Um, add to it whatever, reds, yellows, blues, it works with everything. Uh, it could even work with black colors like neutral tint, you know? Um, so yeah, 
and darkening a bit of the roots. Now it's going to jump soon. So again, you, you have my apologies for skipping. I don't know why the camera didn't film some parts of the uh, wet and wet, but you'll see later on. Now the right side of the tree, I told you, needs to be pushed a little stronger. It is warm. I'm exaggerating the warmth. Uh, I'm making it very orangey. Um, and that's fine. You know, it, it really depends on what I see there. Now, now look at what I'm doing. I'm jumping straight into the darks. I put the dark next to the red here, and they mix together. It looks really, really good. Um, again, at this stage, I'm just placing whatever I feel like needs to be there. I'm uh, just throwing it in. You'll see. Uh, it's, a, it's a crazy stage. Now, I didn't cut out a lot of the mixing, because I think, if anything, a live stream is a good opportunity to show that a bit more. Um, but yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm just putting a bunch of grass and random details in. Uh, Polly's art, uh, I mostly watch for Leron's accent. Just kidding. But it does have a nice rhythm to it. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's rare, but I, I'll speak Hebrew also sometimes. Uh, oh, wait, wait. We're, we're, this is important. So again, more wet and wet, opaque paint. This is the bismuth yellow, quite strong. Look at how it mixes uh, in the... the um, the kind of wet dark areas. Uh, one really cool effect you can get with this is you've seen it in my other painting um, with a couple. I have a pile of paintings here I need to organize. Uh, here, uh, you've seen it here in the background. The way I like to paint these backgrounds in, I'll put a dark and then I'll put an opaque warm next to it. Um, and it automatically creates the feeling of leaves and foliage because the paint spreads out, like you can see here. Uh, so it's a very quick um, way to create that feeling without uh, that much effort, if I'm being honest. It just works. Um, uh, Mary, hello from Massachusetts, USA. Is the yellow you're using the same as gouache? Thanks. It is watercolor, technically. It's the bismuth. Bismuth Yellow by M. Graham. It's very soft because it has um, honey in it because it's M. Graham. Sorry, you couldn't see the section. Um, but I would say it's, I don't know. I, I haven't used gouache enough. I'll have to use it more to figure out if it's similar because it does feel a little different in terms of texture. Uh, I will let you know for sure because it's definitely an experiment I plan on doing. I have a set of gouache here just waiting for me to use it. Um, Vespa, do you prefer to not tape down your paper when you paint? Does it buckle if you don't? Yes, I do prefer not to paint it lately because I can really control the angle. I don't have to lift the entire plank uh, of wood I'm using here. I can just, you know, move the paper as freely as I want to. Now here, my apologies, but don't worry. You'll see a lot of wet and wet. I want to show you. So I hit the record. I don't know why it skipped. Look here now the way it looks. And what's going to happen, it's going to skip. So again, we can try and catch the difference. The difference is, is basically here I have the previous wash and the, the darks of the branches I added. And here the, it's still wet. Okay. Now look at the transition there. I started introducing white designer's wash with some yellow ochre and neutral tint. This is mostly what you see here. And you can see it here as well. You can see the yellow ochre. And this pattern, this way of mixing, um, will mostly, if not always, work on, with opaque paint only. Um, if you put in paints that are very transparent, you won't get this pattern. Now, I don't know if I can zoom in. I don't think I can. Subtitles. There's no subtitles. Um, but hopefully, you can see this. Um, the really only way to get this effect is by using opaque paint with strong contrast, uh, light next to dark will make it more visible, right? So now I do want to show you where the paper is wet. So you see here, all of these areas are still wet, OK? Um, there's still tons of dark and light, opaque and transparent paint together. Um, and from this starting point, you're going to see me enhancing it more and more. Doing the exact same thing I did now, this is not a long, uh, long part of the process. It, it's like a minute, two minutes that I that I skipped. Uh, but you'll see me starting to make it work. Now, I'm using here a combination of cobalt blue and um, and essentially white, like a permanent white. It already comes pre-mixed there, that small well to the right. Um, it has a name that I keep forgetting, indentiner something blue. 
You can find it in the description box in my palette setup. Look at how it enriches the darks. This is a really cool part. So again, if I move just you know 20 seconds back and then I go forward, see how it makes a difference there. And if you look at a reference photo, you can almost recognize a bit of coolness there. Almost a bit of it here. I like exaggerating these things. Um, uh, let's see here. Did I read this? I don't remember. I love watercolor the most, but sometimes I paint with gouache. I think it's nice to challenge the brain with a slightly different medium. Yes, that's what I'm looking forward to doing for sure. Um, uh, Ruth, good morning from Arlington, Virginia. Thank you for being here, Ruth. Much appreciated. Uh, Tia, what about semi-opaque paints? Work or not? Same thing. Same thing. I'm completely agnostic to the transparency of the paint, if I'm being honest. Um, the you know the the levels of opacity aren't even reliable. It's how brands um, kind of title the the specific the given tube. Sometimes it doesn't even reflect what's in it. Um, you know, to me, and this is by the way, I'm adding a bit of John Brilliant, another uh, paint that I like using. Warm again, opaque uh, watercolor by Shinhan PWC. To me, semi-opaque, opaque, it's all the same, just the effect on paper can look different. So instead of, this is how I see it, instead of thinking about the labels and trying to label it, what I'm trying to do is make it intuitive how they behave on paper. So the thing I'm gonna do is test everything out, learn the specific paint I'm using and make it intuitive for me. Um, so then I won't even sometimes be able to tell you Am I using a semi-opaque paint? Am I using a fully opaque paint? Um, I just go with my feeling. Um, any effects that are caused by that are a bonus to me because I like them usually. Now, I just rewinded a bit because I want to show you there is pyrrole scarlet mixed with um, yellow ochre and with the John Brilliant, which is a bit of a milky, peachy, white, uh, opaque paint. So look at how the opaqueness or the opacity of that together with the yellow ochre that is also, I guess that would be a semi-opaque paint. Look at how it's visible once I put in the brush mark. See here? It really is visible. You can tell it's a bit milky and look at how it mixes with the, um, the white and, and black next to it. It's one of these cool effects that I'm after. Um, I don't even know if I'll utilize all of that in the larger painting of this scene. Uh, but to me, it's a very immediate way to push things around and make them look cool. Now, something I regret just a little bit, I went a little wild there on the opaque paint later on, you'll see. And I'm not sure if it was the right move. I can still fix it, though, because opaque paint, you just spray some water on it, it spreads out, and you can even lift it with a tissue much more easily. Um, I'm not sure why that happens. I'm not sure if it's just a more visible effect. Uh, but yeah, now left section, that same, um, um, well, let me figure out the name of this blue. I'll, I need to know it by now. Uh, and some people may ask, it's about the mission gold blue in particular, um, that Marjorie so kindly sent me the palette. Um, this specific blue is, um, Verditner blue, Verditner. Uh, so that's a very milky, lilac-y, slightly opaque blue. It's essentially cobalt blue with permanent white. It looks really good. Um, it's a very useful blue. You'll find this blue everywhere outside. It's a very natural blue. It reflects the sky really well. It reflects different colors really well. I should buy like five tubes of this paint. Uh, but yeah. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you doing? Good morning. Woke up late. Just fed all the pets. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. Um, so now, okay, I sprayed a bit more water to make this paint move a bit. Now look at the everything that looks a little opaque. This spraying of water is going to spread out just a bit. It's just a touch to get it to move a little, right? Uh, by the way, one more really fun effect. Look at this area where these two washes mix together. Again, one of my favorite things to do if I can. Uh, but yeah, more of that Verditner blue. I barely have any of it left. Look at this. It's here. I ran through that blue. It was so useful. Uh, so yeah, I don't have much of it left. But now, so here's the, here's the fun, the real fun part of this process. All it is about is just looking at what I have on paper and seeing if I want to push it in a different direction 
add a bit of this, add a bit of that. Once you introduce opaque watercolors and even gouache to the process, suddenly you realize you have a lot of freedom because you can just layer in lighter paint over what you have there. Um, and so the process in theory could just continue on and on and on and on. And it's not going to be overwork because you can always layer on top of that and fix the overwork. You can always spray water on it and make it spread out a bit more. Um, there's a lot of things in your power. By the way, this is going to be a nice bit. Dark paint surrounded by light opaque paint. Look at how it spreads out very naturally and with this very veiny pattern that I absolutely love. Um, look at how it moves. You can tell it moves differently. Uh, that's the mark of opaque paints. Um, KKD, what are your thoughts on Daniel Smith, Lavender, and similar colors? I think they're wonderful. Again, if you find a color that serves you, like for me, that Verditner blue, that's perfect. And and uh, Daniel Smith's Lavender has that same feeling. So I think it's a very useful color. Um, sometimes these are colors that are very hard to mix naturally. So it is useful to have a tube. Um, but yeah, I'll say in particular, though, I have not used the Lavender yet. But from the way it looks, I can tell it's very similar to some other colors I used. Uh, Jacqueline, I love adding gouache to my paintings. Is that considered mixed media? Um, you know, I think in uh, watercolor societies and and contests and competitions, I think they consider it still like watercolor and still a wet medium. That's what matters to them usually. Um, what I wonder is, Sometimes they go off of percentages. So to me, this painting is definitely a watercolor because it has just a little bit of white. Even though it looks like a lot, it's just small details. And most of the opaque opacity does come from watercolors. I only have one gouache I'm using here, which is permanent white um, by designers gouache by Windsor Newton. Other than that, it's all watercolor. So you could probably consider it watercolor. And especially if most of the use of the gouache is watered down. To me, it's just watercolor, I think. Um, Lauren, hey, Lauren, good morning. Thank you for your, explain, for, your, for your explaining. Watercolor and gouache are very similar in my opinion. Sometimes the gouache is not transparent enough. Right now, I'm enjoying acrylic paint. Interesting. Yeah, acrylics never got me. I don't like them at all, but uh, I, I like the look. I just don't like using them. Uh, as for, yeah, them being interchangeable, pretty much to me. Uh, so now, you say gouache is not transparent enough. That is something for me to explore. Because my experience uh, with watercolor is it gives me the full range, and then I can add gouache for the opaques. So maybe just using gouache with some watercolor won't work as well for me. Uh, Elizabeth, just joined. I was wondering, are those tube paints? Yes. Um, I believe everything here, yes, everything here is tube paints. Nothing here came like that because this palette, uh, it's a Mugello 18 well airtight palette, came together with, um, uh, no, it didn't come together with anything. It was just like that. So I put in all the paints, mostly Daniel Smith, uh, some, um, what's his name, uh, M. Graham, and I think this is Schmincke. I'm not sure. So that would be this. Um, this one is a Mugello, uh, Mugello um, Mission Gold. Uh, all of these were poured in from tubes. So yes, this is just two paints. Some tube paints were gonna are gonna be the same as pens, honestly. Um, but some pens tend to be a little harder. Uh, so I prefer to err on the side of caution and just go with tubes for the most part. Now, if I already have a pen of a paint that I like, I'll use it, of course. Um, Jacqueline, can you tell us about entering watercolor contests? I was thinking about entering one. Yeah, it's interesting. I actually. Um, I entered, it's not really a contact, contest, it's, um, um, okay, so I recently joined the American uh, Watercolor Society. You just sign up as a member, pay 50 bucks fee, and you're there. Um, and they do have, and we're going to continue with the process in a second, they do have um, an online exhibition coming up. So I um, submitted a painting there, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I believe the juror is Thomas Schaller, by the way. <clears throat> and so in that format, if you're a member, you can just enter. You can just make a submission. Uh, very often, a local watercolor society will just send you an email saying there is a competition or contest, whatever. They're going to give you the criteria and requirements. If you adhere to them, you're going to have a good time. 
Um, they'll ask maybe for a specific size. Usually they don't mind. Sometimes they'll ask for specific dimensions, for specific subjects. Um, you just submit it and you're done. Um, that would be the easiest, I think. Now you could Google search watercolor contests, see what's happening. You could look at events. So if you have watercolor events like uh, Plan Air or stuff like that, maybe we'll have their own competitions and contests. I hope that makes sense. Um, the entry is very simple. Usually there's a fee, you pay the fee, you're there. Um, I think the more challenging thing, and we can talk about that later if you want, is how to choose paintings to submit. If you have a bunch of paintings, how you choose the most correct one for the event. That's a science in and of itself. Uh, Polly's Arts, I want to try acrylics, but I never know what kind to try, heavy or soft body, etc. I had no idea there, there are multiple uh, types. I didn't know. I think if, okay, if there's heavy and soft body, I'm sure what I had is soft body and I hated it. It felt more transparent than watercolor. Um, the white there, I thought I, I'm just going to put the white paint over it and it's going to actually look white. It took like five layers to just show. So if it is soft body, don't go for that. I'm not sure though. I didn't even know there's a distinction. Uh, Jan's art Taylor on experimenting is always fun. I occasionally use Holbein lavender and Naples yellow. Definitely have uses. Yeah, Holbein. I keep hearing good things about Holbein. Um, so this really makes me think I'll probably give them a try at some point. Um, I keep hearing good things about them. Uh, yes, how to choose a painting. Uh, yeah, definitely. So the way I chose my painting for this one is it's very individual, of course. Let me uh, let the process run a bit. It's very individual. And stop me if there is something about the process you want to ask. But it's the same color combinations. I'm just pushing it more towards uh, finalizing it. Um, to me, I like to choose a painting that really showcases as much as I can my uniqueness. The one thing I don't want it to do is look like other people's paintings. And because I do have a lot of paintings that answer that criteria, yeah, I'm good to go. Um, now, sometimes there's a specific topic or a theme to the contest. So that's definitely something you want to take into consideration. By the way, here's the orange I told you about earlier, and you can see most of it here. So you definitely want to take the theme, if provided one, to consideration, because it will lead to better results. Um, I think you want to choose a painting that does show some proficiency in the medium, but there is another element that maybe is not as thought of. Uh, and that is strategy. So, for example, this competition, this exhibition, it's an online exhibition. Now, you can't submit the same painting to this and to the main uh, competition. So, I'm saving something special, something really extra for that. So, sometimes you'll select not the craziest, most unique one out of um, hundreds of paintings you paint, they'll go a tier, quote unquote, lower, but still an excellent work. So that's another thing to consider. To me, though, the one thing that I think you have no control over the jurors, what they're going to like, what they're going to dislike, what you do have control over is whether your work looks like it's your work or it could be confused with all of the other people's works or a more generic style. That's the one thing I tend to avoid. Uh, I have nothing against painting in a generic style, but I think if you really want to stand out in the most pure sense of the word, just stand out when the juror goes over the 100 plus submissions, you at least want yours to do something for them. And if it looks like a copycat of a style that everyone knows, it may not do that. Now, if this is your true style, it looks a bit like someone else's, that is fine if it's really your style. What I'm saying is have it show your style. So you have someone like Dushan Dukaric, which people don't like when I compare him to Joseph Zbukovic, but I mean, even their work process is similar. I love them both. There is nothing wrong with Dushan's work. And honestly, I don't even know if Dushan influenced Joseph Zbukovic or vice versa. So, so that's a style that is just similar. It's just similar to Joseph Zbukovic's style. So would I would I tell Dushan, don't paint like that? No. Maybe the uniqueness can come from the special subject matter selection. 
So uh, Joseph Bookvich, by the way, let me pause and rewind a bit. This is an important bit. So okay. Joseph Bookvich does a lot of um, cityscapes, obviously equestrian. Is that the right word for horses? Um, so what you'd want to do is maybe choose something that completely separates you from it. So if this book, which does um, landscapes too, you want to go maybe still life. I haven't seen a lot of still lives by this book, which not a lot of portraits, same, right? Um, some of my favorite paintings of Alvaro Castane are those where he breaks off from the his usual subject matter. So when he paints the interior of the studio, I love that. When he paints portraits or people that, that show a bit more of the face, and not just from afar. I love that. So that's another way to really separate yourself from from other artists who uh, also have submitted their artwork. And and at the end of the day, that's your best way to compete is to do something that is totally you. No one else can compete with you on that front. Now there is a risk, right? Maybe the judges just don't like your style, and you're you have no chance to begin with. Whatever. Usually, if the work is good enough and unique that's a key combination i think um, let's look at a few more comments and then we'll we'll basically where we are with the process is i put in a bunch of opaque paint in the places i recognize it so you see a bunch of opaque paint here and it's where i recognize it here and my intention is to now smear it around blur it a bit by spraying water and, and by using the brush okay sometimes i like to again put everything where it needs to be and then spread it and take care of the edges that's just something i do sometimes but we'll let we'll continue in a second kkd aquarelle says acrylics is cool but so messy compared to watercolor and gouache that is true that's an aspect of it i didn't like as well uh i've used schmincke academy acrylics and their white covers well from the first layer okay yeah i think the mistake i made was just not getting good enough of a brand that's probably what i did wrong uh elizabeth is it normal for paint to crumble a little when re-wetting your palette yes some um some pigments are just flakier than others that's i think a better way to put it yeah they do crumble they're flaky they they just turn to flakes that's okay you know as long as it doesn't bother you using them um it's it's it can happen it can happen yes uh, my friend Ryuzaki, man, I want to be an artist, but my family probably financial, uh, my family problems, I guess, financial problems, I can't. Because I'm from uh, middle class, so I'm really forced to do jobs that don't, that I don't like. I can have no time to paint. You can make time to paint, um, but yeah, it's not always easy. But thank you so much. Uh, if I can encourage you, that makes me very happy. Thank you. Um, Drew, good morning from Wisconsin. Uh, Jacqueline, I paint animals and thought about painting a uh, pangolin. It's unique. I know what a pangolin is. Let me just make sure. Yes, like an armadillo. That's cute. That is a good subject, actually. If you can get it to look um, to look strong on a technical basis, strong in terms of your style, visible. Uh, yes, for sure. That's a good one to go. I don't see a lot of animals, generally a lot of animal paintings. I don't like painting animals as much. I don't know why. I just don't. I like paintings of animals. I don't like painting them. Uh, Rhonda, so you just spray the paint with water to activate. Did you also spray the paper? I don't see you cleaning your brush in between cars. Does that ever cause issues? Yes, Rhonda, I barely clean my um, my brush between washes, between different areas on the palette. I just go for it. I don't mind the contamination. Usually, if you just dig enough into the well, you will be able to produce the color you want. Plus, I think it's to my benefit when the color is a little organic, meaning it's all mixed together, and then I add a bit of one color to make it stronger. That leads to paintings that feel more together. Um, so that's definitely something I like. Now, as for spraying, I sprayed some water on the paper. I sprayed water on the paints in my palette to reactivate them. Um, I spray all the time especially in these kinds of paintings that they're not too large the the subject matter is very organic you can get things a little wrong here and there and it still won't show um, i tend to spray very freely just get things moving i don't mind if washes merge together as long as it's not completely you know too much and it's just a gr big gray blob uh so yeah uh, i think that answers it hopefully uh, Drew, it almost looks like gouache. Yes, it, because uh, it is. This is designer's gouache, actually. 
Uh, Chris Petrie on YouTube keeps his paints wet with a wet paper towel and keeps them in the fridge. Then they don't dry out and crack. That's interesting. That's the first time I hear about that. That's really cool. Um, it doesn't happen to me almost to any paints. Now, they do dry. That's another thing. But I never get them to crack unless it's a specific pigment that does that. Uh, hey, John, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. So let me show you now. This is the crucial part. Um, yes, it is gouache. But, but just a bit. You'll see now I'm spraying water on it. And it's gouache mixed with watercolor. Um, and there's also a lot of opaque watercolor just in here. Um, I spray some water. And I'm going to come back with the brush in a second and, and move it around with a damp brush. So I told you I placed it where I wanted to. You can already tell it's starting to spread out. And now I'm going to weaken and spread it out using the brush just by passing over it, moving it a bit. Now, honestly, I think it ended up being too strong. Um, and I'll probably, in the final version, it's not going to be as strong in terms of highlights. I don't need as many highlights as I put there. And one more thing you'll notice is this is white gouache. So it tends to dull the yellow. So the yellow ends up being not as vibrant as it could have been. So that's one more thing to, to take into consideration. If you mix a permanent white with yellow ochre, it's still going to dumb down the yellow ochre a bit. Um, if you want to use a warm, and this is something I should look into, a warm gouache, that could be a good solution, like a yellow ochre, but the gouache version. That could work really well. That's something I should look into, for sure. Um, that's my one problem with my highlights. If you look, if you compare the, my highlights to the original, they end up being a little warmer. Now, I did make up for it in the tree trunk itself, but still, could be better. Now, I want to show you something interesting. I know my hand is blocking a bit. Let me show you one more way of achieving a graded wash. So what you'll notice with the road, it's very gentle, but you will notice it's a little darker on the right side. It goes gradually from light to dark, but also from top to bottom. It darkens just a bit. So the way I do it is really dumb. I just go over with this same brush, uh, Michael Solovyev's brush. And the less I want it to show, I just do quick passes with a bit of a drier brush. You're going to see this perfectly on the other side of the tree. Sometimes the dumb solutions just work. Uh, so you'll see it now. I'm mixing, uh, this is ultramarine and, and neutral tint. And the more, the higher I go, the more I'm going to use just a bit more of a light touch. And I consider that a smooth transition to the background. Uh, sometimes these dumb solutions are the best, honestly. So I just place that in and it works. Uh, hey, Laura, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being here. So happy you get uh, more time to paint, right? I think you mentioned that uh nowadays so yeah that's really really good um keeps them in the fridge to prevent mold so hmm i only got one moldy paint ever and it's in a palette i don't, don't use anymore anyway this palette just stays fresh maybe it's because i paint very frequently i don't know even this it's not mold even though it may look like it um so yeah it's a, you know i'm not sure maybe it's the the weather here Though it's very humid, so it should get moldy. Oh, look at these. This is a really nice touch. So this is big. Look at what it looks like before. And once I add more of that uh, bismuth yellow, which is watercolor, for those who joined uh, now. Again, look at this section. Top left corner, OK? This bismuth yellow, just directly as it is. This is before. And as I apply the paint, look at how much life it has and how much it even blends into the dark paint next to it, making a texture that looks like, you know, whatever uh, whatever it is. And the thing is, it's not really there like that. It looks a little different. But I just kind of wrapped the tree in foliage and placed it all around it, uh, which I think looks better than the reference photo. So this is definitely something I'm, I'm going to maintain, hopefully, for the larger version I do intend of doing here. Uh, and here's a bit of more of that bismuth. It really shows. This is a very, very strong paint. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the greens that I put around the tree have been erased by the more the opaque paints I added later on. 
I can decide to bring that back now. I can decide not to. It's fine either way. Uh, I am going to darken the shadow to the bottom here. Uh, you can even see Ruth's tail and, and hind leg here. Uh, I only noticed it towards the end of the process. I was so hypnotized by the reference photo. By the time I was done with it, I'm like, oh, that's Ruth. <coughs> She's walking right outside the frame. Uh, so yeah, and it's nice to put in this dark wash while these greens are still kind of wet because they will mix together. It all leads to a more organic look if it mixes together. Uh, and this is pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, the end. Maybe I'll do like one more small details. One more or two small details, rather. Um, let's see. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll add some darks to the tree trunk, I think. It, from, by the looks of it, that's what I'm planning on doing. Um, oh, no. I'm fixing the shape of the tree. Yeah. The, the shape got a little crooked. Uh, again, my drawing was very minimal. I think I even leave it like that. I don't even try to blend this shape too much. Just kind of letting it be. Um, I don't know, there's some magic to that spontaneity, that mess that works really well, I find. Um, and I'm going to show you the end result scanned in a second. You'll see. Yeah, I'm signing this. This is done. Uh, Laura, thanks for wrong. Good days, bad days, but at least there are good days. Yes, indeed. At least there are. I would say if you have peaceful days, that's even better than good days, quote unquote. Um, and painting is provides a lot of peace. Uh, so yeah, this is the final result. Um, just to look a bit at the nuances, and then we'll zoom in a bit. You'll see more. Again, this is the Verditner blue really showing on the dark sections of the tree. You can see it even here. Um, from an overall perspective, I mean, look at how messy the road is behind. It still works to me. Um, I will be a little more accurate in the final uh, piece, but this is really like in the larger piece, more dedicated. But to me, this is wonderful. Now, if you look at the lower section right here, this is high potential for a big mess, which there is a bit of a mess, but I think it still reads nicely as the grass and the details and everything, especially if you zoom out. If you look at, let's say, if you look at what I'm holding here, see, it kind of, I think it reads well. Um, there is some logic to it, meaning, okay, this is a dark shadow. This here is still a little darker. And then as we move towards this side, we get more of the light. Um, and, and yeah, I think it looks really cool. So let me uh, hit the play button. We'll do a zoom in. Oh, yeah. My one complaint, my one main complaint is the warmth that was lost due to the white uh, designer's wash opaque paint. That's the one thing I need to remind myself not to do. Uh, either use Joan Brilliant and look at these transitions here and here. Just the small breaks in the um, in the borders of the tree. I love that kind of a thing. Again, it's a matter of taste. You may not like it, which is fine. Look at how um, opaque watercolor and opaque gouache mixes wet and wet. I really like the way this looks. Um, you'll see it here and here. It's very, very milky, though, right? If you want a bright yellow, I think I'll need to use an actual yellow gouache to get that. Uh, which I can because I have it. I just haven't used it yet. This here, if you look, it looks almost like a squid <laughs> upside down <laughs> or, a, or a jelly jelly jellyfish. Uh, so yeah, and here's the final result. Um, so yeah, overall, very interesting process. I love the, the bit of details here in the shadows. I think that looks cool. Let me rewind. Let's just leave it on the kind of the zoomed in frame. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you have questions about the process, questions about watercolor and painting in general, now is a good time. Let me know, because I'm going to leave it here, I think, on this frame. And let's see what you're saying. Um, then I'll show you um, I'll show you the final one here, too, if you want to see it like physically. And I'll show you a couple of reference photos I really want to paint. And yeah, I think that will be uh, the plan for the rest of the stream. So uh, Eric. Hi, Leron. I'm Eric from India. You inspired me to get into watercolor. I've gotten really deep into it. I hope to keep continuing. Yeah, that's cool. If you're really obsessed by it, it's so easy to get obsessed because watercolor is so elusive in a way. Um, you know, I've seen a thread on Facebook. Someone was asking a question in one of the art Facebook groups here. Um, I think she wanted to start painting with watercolor, and she asked if it's a forgiving medium because it looks like something she would maybe be interested in. I don't think you could find one comment that said, yes, it is forgiving. 
everyone said it's a hard medium. It's the most unforgiving medium. It's the most complex medium. Some like the more nuanced answers were you can do it, but but know that it's not a simple medium. And I just disagree. And now some people were a bit cynical about my uh, video that I did. You've been lied to about watercolor. Uh, I guess I was right because everyone everyone tells that lie that watercolor is um, unforgiving, and it actually is. It depends on how you use them. Uh, so yeah, it's so to me, it's so um, obsession invoking. I just want to figure it out. I want to figure out the effect. I want to figure out the impression. I want to figure out how it all works together. I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, acrylics just don't have that appeal. Oils may have it because oils do blend a bit more in that regard, but just on a slow motion scale. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, Nancy, oops, I, for I forgot the 8 a.m. start. Glad I can watch the replay. Cool painting, love the colors. Thank you so much, Nancy. And yes, if you've been here for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, you probably got a glimpse of that last bit that was quite uh, unique. Is this on Arch Cold Press? Um, it is on Saunders Waterford Cold Press. Yes, it is Cold Press, but it's Saunders Waterford. Uh, it's forgiving in the sense that you can get happy accidents. Yeah, same here. But you can just chuck more water on it and it will be good. It'll work, you know. Uh, Jacqueline, when you added the orange, it made the tree really pop. I'm sure it's intuitive, but I, um, I find that I add strange colors to my paintings. Interesting. Yeah, so to me, even if I add a strange color, it still uh, has it has the same other colors in the scene. I'm going to slouch a bit, so let me rearrange the camera. Um, it's still <laughs> got to, I have to make, put it in slouch mode. Um, it's still going to have pretty much the same colors I used for the rest of the painting. So even though it is placed in a strange location on the painting, it's still going to look natural. That's the thing. Um, so I don't know if you're getting something that maybe feels unnatural, but that's a big part of it to me. Now, let me show you the real thing here for a bit. It will always look better, I think, on the real piece of paper. It is buckled a bit. Everyone asks about, you know, how do I deal with this? There is nothing to deal with. Once this is behind glass, it's going to flatten. That's the only thing you really need to know. Um, it's really not a problem. So yeah, it is. It does buckle, but it just doesn't matter. Uh, the buckling pattern is going to happen according to how you paint. Sometimes if you paint one section for a long, long time, focus on that, do a lot of wet and wet there, that's the only part that's going to buckle. The rest is going to be flat. There are so many buckling patterns. This is the most, uh, most frequent one. No, you could just do this. Just kind of help it go back to being flat, but I wouldn't even do that. We'll just keep it like this in a pile until it's time to frame, sell, ship, whatever. And yeah, no problem. No problem there. The buckling doesn't bother me at all. Um, let's go back here. I'll show the painting to the side. Um, uh, KKD, Arsh and Saunders, Waterford are owned by the same company. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Everything is owned by the same companies. It's That's how it is these days. The huge conglomerates that own everything. You know, um, I tried in the past to reach out to companies of uh, different art supplies, different watercolor supplies, paint, brushes, paper. <clears throat> and I tried, you know, finding the right contact because I want to say, hey, I have a big YouTube channel. If you want to do a sponsored video, if you want to do a collaboration, blah, blah, blah. blah. What I found out was that every time I would find a company, there's no one really to talk to in that company it will all go one tier above it to the one conglomerate that owned five of these companies. It would get really boring really fast. So it's interesting. Yes. You think, and you're probably correct. I think it's all by Canson now. Maybe Canson is owned by another company. I don't know. Uh, Jacqueline, like your street scene, you added a glaze, warmed it up. Yes, exactly. And you know what? In theory, I could probably do that here. If I go with a thin glaze over, let's say, the entire right side of the tree, it will reawaken the opaque paint. Opaque paint awakens really easily, but it may push it to be as warm as it needs to be. Um, yeah, I might end up doing that maybe even with the same uh, yellow ochre I used for the, the cityscape scene. And by the way, how cool is it that one thin wash really changes it and makes it look so much better? Uh, that's that's something I, I used to see artists do that and be at awe. Um, 
I forgot who the first artist I saw that does that. I think it was, yeah, the, um, is it David Taylor? I think it's David Taylor. David Taylor. Watercolor. I think that's an artist. Yes, David Color. I mean, I remember the Taylor for sure. I wasn't sure it's David. Yes, he has a lot of courses with the uh, EPC, you know, same brand company as um, Alvaro Castell and Joseph Bookfitch. Maybe later we can look at some videos because he has the exact same thing going. Uh, just putting one glaze. Sometimes it's the sky. It looks wonderful. I love that. Uh, also, I'll add some blue to a subject and it looks good, even though you would think it wouldn't. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, there are almost like hidden colors. Um, when you look at, again, if, if I just rewind this a bit, uh, even in the reference here, you see uh, this, this, this section in the reference photo, it looks a little more blue. Now, it, in, in essence, what you have here is a gray, a very neutral gray. Same here, it's a very neutral gray. Same here, it's a very neutral gray. The difference is some color shows through them. So here it would be a little cool, a little blue. Here it's going to be a little warm, maybe a little red. Here it'll be warm. Here it's stronger on the warm side, right? Um, so yeah, here you have a bunch of hidden colors. I think they look fantastic. Sometimes there's no hidden colors, but a specific color just looks really, really uh, good with the other colors you have, even though it's not in the scene. Um, one thing I will do is borrow one color from one place to another. So you saw, if you've watched this video, which I very foolishly scheduled to 8 a.m. GMT plus 2, so no one watched it. Very few people watched it, unfortunately, and it's probably going to stay like this forever. Um, I put in these yellow and blue marks in very random spots. You know, if you watch this video, which I'm very grateful you obviously watched it, Jacqueline, and I'm sure a lot of people here specifically watched it, um, it's very unique. I think it's a very unique process. So I borrow a color I like from one spot, place it in another spot. If I'm looking back at this, hmm, I wanted to say maybe more of this blue in the street behind, but I actually like the dynamic of the blue and purple. So maybe not. Uh, Laura, when I first changed from acrylic to watercolor, I thought it was unforgiving. But the more experience I got, the more I learned how forgiving it can be. Yes, yes, that is accurate. Same for me. Um, KKD watercolor is unforgiving in that it's harder to fix mistakes, but it's doing a lot of work for you. That's that's a big one. See, I never even thought of phrasing it this way, but it does do a lot of the job for you. That is a great way of putting it. Um, yes. And it's very hard for me to give up that aspect, you know, with acrylics. Um, uh, Carney, thank you. Yeah, happy to hear this is a good time for a stream uh, in Serbia. I had another viewer from Serbia. Was it uh, on, a, on the last live stream or was it a comment on YouTube? Someone mentioned, uh, but I'm not sure. But thank you so much. Uh, Jaybu, hey, how are you doing? Good day yourself. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so let me show you. And if you have, again, more questions, feel free to ask. What I'm going to do is show you. Um, stop screen. I want to show you some other things I look forward to painting. And just kind of uh, the, the, um, the things I'm after. Um, so I have this reference folder. Let's see. How can I share this? Um, if I hit this window and then I'm just trying to figure out what would be the most effective way. Yeah, that's going to open up a new window. Okay, whatever. I'm going to just show you. So I have a, I have a folder with references that I want to paint. So I have this, um, new batch. Let me show you. I don't know how I can share this on StreamYard. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So just to give you the gist of it, I want to show you what I mean by the scenes that I don't find as interesting. So I just took a bunch of photos here around our neighborhood. 
And can I just so, show this split screen? Why wouldn't it let me show it split screen? Whatever. Um, so yeah, this specifically is a scene I really want to paint. Uh, but the like this building, this one, it's going to be a nice huge painting with this cast shadow, really, really nice. But other, <laughs> this, this is another thing I wanted to paint. But other like just buildings, I don't find as interesting as I would have in the past. It's a beautiful neighborhood, by the way, but I think just buildings for now, like this kind of a thing would have attracted me to paint it before. Now, not as much. Um, I'm not sure what it is, this too. You know, even the, the that painting I did of this street scene that, that I'm, that's going to go live on the auction, by the way, soon, uh, Saturday. There was another element to it, the cars down below in the street level or the light from the window. I don't know why I find it less um, of what I'm after. This, These kinds of things. I don't know why. I'm not sure. And I'll let me show you um, another example for things that interest me more. So this painting that I just uh, obviously shared with you today. So see this thing here. You can see Ruth's like This is what we painted and tail. Um, this fascinates me. So this is more of an interesting pattern. This is the orange I was talking to you about earlier. Now, if I can capture that fibrous feeling of the tree bark, that's definitely something I'm, I want. Um, look at how this feels cool compared to the warm. These nuances, I'm going to probably sketch this to be much, much larger and try to capture a lot of nuances. Uh, but look at another one I took of this very same tree. Um, Again, I like when there's something special. I think she just pooped, Ruth, here in the photo. Um, maybe peed, sorry. <laughs> um, there's something interesting about that to me that in the past I wouldn't have found interesting and I would be interested in something else. So the point is, you know, taste really changes. Um, what else am I very interested in painting? Like something that's pending that I really want to do next. Um, let me find it for you. Uh, references. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Uh, new batch. Right, that's good. That's okay. Because I have a few. Oh, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting. So I did take this photo. Um, a couple of months back. And there's something really cool about it because you get um, you get all of this reflected light and the cat. Now, if you look at the fur pattern and how it feeds off the light, I think there's something really interesting here. I may end up painting this with a very vague background, obviously. Um, yeah, I forgot I took that photo. Uh, and I think there was one more that I was really looking forward to painting. Uh, let me see. Painting project. Planner, that's fine. That's fine. I do want to try these out. So you've seen me doing the plan air. Uh, let me share this with you once again. You've seen me doing this plan air painting here. These two, maybe you've seen it on Instagram. Uh, I haven't shared a post yet. Maybe I'll after the stream, I'll share the scanned paintings. But here's the original. So you can see the painting and the scene together, just to kind of get an idea of what I was going for. I have good pictures of this too. So I think I'll do a studio version of the same painting. Could be interesting. Uh, same for this one, see? This is really cool. I wanna try that kind of a thing out. Um, Cause now I have, I can rely on my um, plein air work as almost as reference. Um, it will give me that, um, that special unique factor that, that is not present in purely studio work um, and feed into the final result, hopefully, of the thing, of, of the, the more, I'd say, uh, polished painting. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, these are a few that I'm quite excited about painting. Uh, let me see here. Poof, yes, indeed. She was, she's, she's pooping all over Ruth when, we, when I take her to, no, she's, uh, sometimes she's, she just doesn't want to continue the walk. I don't know why. She, uh, The new area here, she just gets stuck. Only we've been here for, what, a month? 
in a bit and change something like that and only now she starts wanting to to break through the bounds of, of the boundaries that where she just stops i don't know why and sometimes she's too lazy and, and i or she's i don't know she's she just doesn't want to move farther from the house so i end up kind of telling her come on let's go let's go i pulled the the leash a bit she comes with me and then she poops so like what was the point of going back home you had to poop but yeah uh, Drew, I started a project last year. I'm painting every country. That's over 250 of them. I'm only in the uh, E, I guess, Europe. Um, that's really cool. So what was the first one you painted? Uh, let me know. And what's your next one you plan to paint, if you have a plan? Um, I just find an image I like off the internet. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I wanted to show you something else, too. Um, a painting that every time I, I look at it again, I realize how good it is. And then I'm thinking, what should I do with it? Maybe I should submit it to some kind of a contest. Um, Jacqueline, this is my answer to your question. Like, again, how do you choose a painting? And I like to go for uniqueness. Check this out. This, to me, is as unique as it gets. Um, so this like this is my work. I know it looks a bit gray. It could be thought of as you know an Alvaro or something, but still the way I utilize the paint here, I feel like it's really mine. And you can also find a bit of a halo. I actually used some pastels to get the halos around these lights. Just a bit though. You can even see its texture here. Can you see that? But like this painting is so good. Um and it's fun to look at it a couple of months later. See blue, like blue reflected light and warm reflected light um really like this one this is an, a good example of a painting that i think is solid technically is also very 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 unique um so i think i will probably submit this to maybe if there's an upcoming contest um it's very personal you kind of want to find the boundary between like if it's very if it's a, you know what i don't think it's a limitation um i guess some paintings could be too personal to have a wider appeal. This is not one of them. I really like this one. Um, going alphabetical. Oh, OK, so you're in the E's alphabetically. OK, I, I don't know how I didn't realize that. That's cool. That is really, really fun. Ecuador has some really nice views. I think every country, at the end of the day, has some very unique, and maybe even if not unique, just really good looking views, um, if you dig a little, for sure. Uh, so yeah, that's fun. Uh, thank you so much, Carney. Much appreciated. I uh, like the atmosphere. Thank you so much. Afghanistan was my first country. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So nothing comes before that, I suppose. Uh, those imperfect details give it life. Yes, and if you look at, for example, I don't know why I painted the chair this way. This pattern was non-existent. The way I painted this was, this was wet paint, obviously, and I did, I charged in just super thick paint. I don't know why it doesn't make sense even you have to understand that the the painting the the chair section of the painting this thing here it's the same chair here there's a gap and i decided to paint that gap by just doing this one two three four but it ended up working so yeah the more i look at this one the better it looks i even got the pattern of the um, the way they wiped the, the table that i thought i would miss actually it's fun looking back at it works you knew were good back then, but now you really see their uniqueness. But yeah, it's a very personal painting to me. If you know this person, you'll recognize them. Um, I think you may end up recognizing their face. So I do kind of want to, I don't know, maybe gift it to them. Maybe do something more interesting with it. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this is pretty much all I have for today. Uh, let me know if you want to discuss something else. Um, Saturday's video, I do have in, in store um, an inter interesting process. I'm not sure how much I like the results, honestly, but I think it has nothing to do with the technique. So I painted this little kettle thing. Um, the technique I used here, like the actual process, there's a lot of good, interesting things about it which is what makes me maybe want to share it. Um, even though like, so, so one thing I really like here, okay? 
look at how and oh i was asking this in a comment so if the person asking the comment is here if you can use watercolor to uh, express like a bright light surface casting light onto something else this is a great example i directed them to my painting pesto video but this is the perfect example for that right so there are some interesting nuances for this one um i think this is going to be saturday's video uh hey marjorie thank you for being here and by the way oh yeah i told you i'll show you the this is the first version i did of this now it's still workable i can just keep painting over it but i decided to paint another one and leave this for later and this is where i'm at with that that's i started filming this and then i decided to do another version because i wanted to push the tree to be as dark on the first go so th that's another thing and these two i don't think i've shown them yet on a, on a stream other than the you saw the photo earlier so yeah a couple of other things here um nice to see you too thank you so much for being here uh we're just wrapping up actually um so yeah so Saturday is going to be this kettle. And for next week, I'll have a bunch of other processes for you. I'm really looking forward to I'm, I'm chronically tired lately. Uh, so you'll have to forgive me if my energy is a little different in videos as well. I'm just tired. Uh, John, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Um, I'm looking forward to sleeping in a bit. Same effect, by the way, here. See? Same effect of this, these veins of the paint i love that opaque paint right next to dark paint uh joey thank you for being here you were quite the the during the stream but thank you much appreciated i don't know i sometimes don't know who watches unless i see a message in the chat so it's a it's a pleasant surprise uh, and yeah uh, hopefully you will use uh you know your weekend or the following days maybe paint a little Feel free to experiment, find different things. I'll always start from that. I get it, yes. This is a really, oh yeah, I said I may, I may show it. This is a really nice um, painting. Let me share this. I will present it, share screen, uh, Chrome tab. There we go. So I don't know about the rest, but to the right here, you can see this is super, like this is high quality artwork that's really really nice absolutely love that good job really good job you know you can tell when something is polished <laughs> there was a lot of care put into it and that's definitely showing uh so yeah thank you everyone for watching really appreciate it um saturday's the auction for oh yeah i should show you probably i'm so bad at this wait let me just just, come on, just let me show you one last thing I think I should have, if you stuck around and you haven't quit yet. So I think I have this here. There we go. I made a folder with all of um, my French paintings. So these are all going to the auction on Saturday. So if you want to check that out, it's going to be fun. Um, yep. All of these going on the auction. It's fun to look at the, the prices go up. Hopefully they will uh but we'll see about that this one i think is uh is gonna be liked quite a bit there but this one is the most you know the most involved and in, yeah uh so yeah with that thank you uh laura i can't wait to catch up on the beginning of this one yes enjoy it i hope you will find the process interesting my apologies for the part it skips i missed a bit of the <laughs> Bit of the process there my apologies about that uh thank you i'm much better now that was eight years ago well that is awesome um i forgot if you have a youtube channel um i'm gonna find it my apologies i might i might already be subscribed if you do but i can't find it so maybe you don't uh but yeah feel free to send me an instagram if i'm not following uh so happy you enjoyed it too by the way and yep, yeah, I will see you soon. Until next time, take care. Uh, and yeah, there will be a video on Saturday, so I'll see you then. And hopefully another live stream next week, uh, maybe painting this. I so will see. We'll see. Until next time, take care.